today, someone from Kanye's team actually hit me up and said, hey man, you have the green light to go. After the show was done, I went through like this back place with my past and then Brett and Kanye just randomly comes off, pulls off his mask and he sees me and I don't want to say anything, but he just All right, y'all, it is Friday, February 9th, 7 a.m. right now. I just woke up and I'm, I'm coming back from my favorite coffee shop. I just got a text message saying that I'm approved to go to the Kanye X Ty dollar sign Vultures listening party tonight. Like tonight. So if you don't know, earlier in the week, I put up on her IG story, which is at Kids Takeover, go follow that. I said that I'd love to go and cover the event if possible. And I heard radio silence for a while, but today someone from Kanye's team actually hit me up and said, hey man, you have the green light to go. And I mean, I always say shoot your shot because seriously, the worst that could happen is you get ignored or I guess they say no. And now here's the thing. I want to be close. Like, I want to be close to the stage. I want to be in the media access pit. I want to actually be able to cover this show for you guys as a journalist and not just me watching in the crowd. I feel like I put in so much work doing KTO and covering hip hop that I want to be recognized as someone that can actually go to these events and get the credentials to go give you guys exclusive info. But so here's the thing, when I actually asked Kanye's team about the media pass, I pretty much got radio silence and have not heard back at all. So I'm a little concerned. I don't really know what's gonna happen. So basically here's my plan. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna say fuck it. If I go there and ask and they give me the media credentials, then boom, I got that. Thing is though, I can't bring this dope ass vlog camera with me um, because if I just get a GA pass, they're gonna make me like dispose of this camera. Like I am not doing that. I spent a lot of money on this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go full out iPhone for you guys. I'm not gonna lie, pretty underrated camera here with the cinematic mode and the like 10x zoom but yeah i have never ever been to a kanye listening party before and it's always kind of been my dream i remember every time he did a stream me and my brother would go order food sit in front of the tv and obviously wait hours for him to come because he would come super late and we would literally like dance and jump <laughs> because I appreciate and respect the production value that much. Like that's how much I'm a fan of this guy. And I think the albums are always cool, but it's like the experiences that he makes doing these events, that's the type of stuff that I geek out over. So to say that we might be able to cover that in person is, is a big deal to me. I'm gonna go out to my apartment right now and do some KTO work, catch up on some emails and then get dressed for this event. About to go pick up my brother right now, meet him. I was gonna Uber there, it's an hour drive. So I'm like, fuck it, let's just, let's just take the train all the way to uh, I think this is in like Long Island or something. Yo guys, so I honestly thought we were just gonna get GA, but uh, got the media pass, got the media pass. And my brother got the media pass too. So um, I will try to do the best for you guys. And I'm in the pit right here. There's not that many like influencers and stuff here. I don't know if I'm early or people just don't want to come, but uh, I think Kanye's gonna come out uh, right there. I specifically did not even watch the Chicago listening party because I wanted to go into this New York one in person with a fresh mind, not knowing what's gonna happen. So at this point in the influencer pit, I saw Black Hane. And if you don't know Black Hane, he's the dude who's always screaming new Cardi announcements to us. New Cardi tonight! And I was like, yo, what if Cardi's here? And then some dude tapped me on the shoulder and he's like, bro, I heard Cardi's recording right now in the back with Ye. And boom, next thing you know, I see Kanye walking down the aisle.
Then, next thing you know, I think you know who comes out. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. And then the craziest thing, like, I don't know how security let this happen. There's this underground rapper who just, like, rushed the stage and was trying to give out a sticker or something to Kanye. Uh, here's a little picture of me and Rich the Kid. I thought it was kind of wholesome. I just fucked the world wrong, she need a morning after. And then the morning after. Inspired, it sounds like watching the world. And I call this only one go, but you had your fun, no. Run the block like my tumbo, you had it on low. Every day in New Jersey, on my way to New York. I was like, picture this, if every room got a different bitch. Do that make me a polygamist? Without the deals, I guarantee I'm still nigga rich. Shit is fucking ridiculous. Oh! 
In case you don't know why we're so hyped, it's because that was a callback to So Appalled off My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Dirty white bitches. I mean, the shit is fucking ridiculous. But yeah, now peep this footage of Ye coming off stage and walking right past us because the concert was over. So I'll tell you guys about this a bit more later, but I actually went backstage after and I went into this little hallway and out of nowhere Kanye comes out without the mask. I had the chance to talk to him. I'm such an idiot. I didn't say anything, but I'll, I'll tell you guys about that in a sec. Alright, show finished and man, I was so special. I know, I thought I was going to be biased. What's up, bro? I'm Snuffinose. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm vlogging right now. Be Snuffinose. KTO's the best, just person to watch for anything. Such a positive person, such good content. Bro, of course, bro. I was the kid that ran on stage. I'm about to see some funny that videos was you? of that shit. Yo, yeah, you got a video of them pushing you. Like, you bro? got pushed in the corner. Did, yeah, you guys, did you get the video of him choking me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That what did you think was gonna crazy. happen though? I didn't think I mean, he was gonna yeah. choke. Okay, I knew they were gonna like throw, throw me off and do some bullshit. I didn't think he was gonna fucking yeah. grab me by my that neck. Was, so nice. uh, I was trying to promote him because yeah. I'm his manager. I had signs that said free Stephanos. Yeah, normally like, we have yeah. stickers. It means to free yourself from anything that holds you back in life from progressing and becoming your best self. Were okay. you trying to like tell that to Kanye or Cardi or like? I mean, we got the chance, but just any way to expose it to them. Yeah. You gotta do what other people can't if you wanna get to positions where other people aren't. Go the extra fucking 20 miles instead of the extra one mile, bro. Like, you gotta do the shit that no one else will do. Alright, anyways, what I was saying was that was insane, bro. That was. I, I'm not even biased just because, like, you know, I got invited and things like that. Like, Truly, that was like words can I explain. I was just next to Rich the Kid the whole time and he was just dancing with me. As catchy as the songs are and whatever, the biggest thing to me is like it's so inspiring being in a place like that and seeing them pull off this like grand production in like what one day's notice. Anyways, about to go take the, the lure back home uh, to Brooklyn. All right, guys, so it's the next morning. I'm able to actually process all that happened. Um, so let's let's talk about it. So this media pass that I had, it actually let me walk through everywhere backstage. And surprisingly, there weren't that many people because I think Cardi had just gone onto his own suite and everyone followed him. So I'm walking through this little hallway and there's this dead end and out of the door, Kanye just randomly walks out. It was just him with like two security guards and he takes his mask off and no offense by this, but man, Kanye is really short. I don't know if it's because I'm tall, but I definitely expected Kanye to be a lot taller. Anyways, he just stops for a sec and looks at me and my brother and he kind of waits for us to say something, but I genuinely did not want to come off as a fanboy. So I just like smirked and then he smirked back and then he walked off somewhere else. I'm so dumb though. I definitely should have said something like not even a try to promote KTO type thing. Bro, it is so hard to film in New York without noise. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could have just asked him a question about what the album or the performance because there was barely anyone there. And yeah, I guess I'm an idiot for that because I'll probably never get that opportunity again. But in my mind, how I'm wired is like, trust me, bro, don't worry, don't be a fan. You want to meet these people when they actually know who you are and you guys are working together. I don't know, maybe that's stupid. You guys let me know in the comments. Should I have said something? Would you have said something if you're me? Because I'm fully regretting it now. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about this album. So here's a list of the songs. Um, the green checkmark ones are the ones that I liked. It's actually quite a lot, but just because I liked a song doesn't mean I think it's incredible, by the way. Because I will say, I think Donda was definitely a better album than this, and that had a lot more highs. Whereas with this album, I fuck with a lot of the sounds, but I view it more as a playlist than an actual album. We'll put it this way. Sort of how Drake made more life, I kind of view this as Kanye's more life. I'm not saying one album is better than the other. I'm just saying both felt like a compilation of good songs that you could just play on shuffle. I don't think there was any real cohesiveness to Vultures, really. I wouldn't say there was any real theme, no transitions that pull the songs together. I mean, it was pretty unorganized from the sequencing to the rollout, all the date changes, but I'm willing to say, honestly, who cares? Because genuinely the music was so impressive. Bro, this man Kanye can be 70 years old and he'll still be the most innovative rapper out there. Every Kanye album, everyone gets the most excited because we have no idea what to expect. We don't know what it's gonna sound like. And I think that's how music should be. So I think sonically, this was a perfect mix of two albums, Watch the Throne and The Life of Pablo. I heard a lot of Life of Pablo on songs like 
paid and paperwork. And then I definitely heard a lot of Watch the Throne in songs like Burn, Problematic, and King. You guys feel that too or no? I also feel great and a bit bad for Ty Dolla Sign because I mean, for one, he's getting so much attention right now on a global scale that he might have not gotten before. And getting to say that you made a collab album with Kanye is something that only like Jay-Z or Kid Cudi could do. But I am really seeing how the main praise is really going towards Kanye. Like I did find it a bit odd that Ty Dolla Sign is not even on the album cover. It's just Kanye and his naked wife. But I'm gonna give Ty Dolla Sign his props because I think for recent Kanye albums, singing was not really his strong suit. So for Ty Dolla Sign to come in and make up for that, I think was super needed. And I think having him do a lot of the singing actually let Kanye do some of his best rapping, like real rapping since the life of Pablo or probably Jesus, especially if you go towards the end of this album. Okay, features wise, I think the only outstanding features were India Love, and yes, I'm being for real. I know she's not really like an artist, but her part was very catchy. Um, Playboy Cardi for sure. I think Carnival is some of his best rapping that he's done recently. I think that song sounds like it'll be played in like a fucking Liverpool arena and could go down as song of the year. We'll see. Um, Northwest as well. I'm not even trying to be clickbaity here or trying to be different. Bro, were they like 10 year old bars? Yes, but was it extremely catchy? For sure. It's actually kind of a shame because once her part is done, I think the song doesn't become interesting. I actually wish the song kind of ended after her part or she had another verse. I think the features that we did not need, um, no disrespect, but I don't think we need YG and Quaver. I would much rather see Kanye tap in with a newer, younger generation artist, even someone like Yeet. But yeah, can't really judge an album after one day. So those are my initial thoughts. You know, I would love to get closer to Kanye's camp and attend another one of these events. So for one, I appreciate them for letting me be media at this one. But yeah, thanks for watching this vlog, everyone. I got more interviews lined up for you guys coming up super soon, and I'm gonna catch you in the next video.